Bob Hormatz here in a Fox Business exclusive, served as Under Secretary of State under Hillary Clinton. ISIS has spread like a sickening algae, in part fed by their oil money that they get from the black market. This map, and we can put it up, shows that this city of Sinjar, which some Americans may never have heard of, you can see how key it is, how crucial it is. It's right between Mosul in Iraq, where the oil came from, and Raqqa, which is the Syrian stronghold for ISIS. By inserting ourselves there and letting the Kurds jump in, what does that do? Well, it's extremely important, as you point out, because Mosul is the second biggest city in Iraq. There's a lot of oil in that area. And Raqqa is, as you said, the capital of ISIS. Um, so they're getting money there. They're moving troops back and forth. They're moving supplies back and forth. This is going to hurt them quite badly because the roads there are terrible. This was the best among a lot of poor roads to disrupt this and now have the Peshmerga on top of it. And guarding that road is very important. And it was using American Air Force uh, strikes to help support the Peshmerga. In fact, I was reading that the Peshmerga and the and the um, the other support areas here, the Kurds and and the Yazidis, mm -hmm. they put orange paint on top of their vehicles so that the U.S. air support would know. Listen, we are of course on your side, so make sure not to. This appears to be a success. Finally, Absolutely. why didn't we do it before? We should have done it before. That is yes. one of the problems. We have, are also benefited by the fact that we have very skilled special forces of the United States. They're helping these people. But you're right. They got together, and the Yazidis, who had been trounced by the ISIS people, and many of them were killed, they had a special vengeance in their heart to go after them. So they actually played a very key role. But Peshmerga is critical because they're good fighters, and they came in numbers, and they were organized, and they're very tough. So it was a real combination of American air power, American special forces, the Yazidis, and, and the Peshmerga. And we saw something that we haven't seen in a while, and that is members of ISIS deserting the scene, deserting yes. Sinjar. They were running away with, of course, a lot of the ISIS leaders saying, we'll behead you if you desert. Mm -hmm. Who cares? Those people are so disgusting and horrifying. I think that we need to really, though, focus now on cutting off that money supply. But is this enough? Because we're not certainly uh, bombing the actual oil infrastructure. Is that so that we keep something intact for a rehabilitated Iraq or Syria later on down the line? Well, it may not be enough, and the, they were reluctant really to bomb the oil facilities for a period of time. Now we're doing that because we realize that ISIS needs money. This is their big source of money, and you're going to have to take some collateral damage, which is to say the oil refineries and the wells get blown up. We'll have to restore them later. The key is stopping ISIS, killing as many people as possible um, to push them back and, to, as the president says, crush them. Of course, the uh, the drone strike that has uh, ostensibly killed Jihadi John, that horrifying creature of an individual, uh, that is a propaganda win, definitely. Psychologically, it's a huge bump, isn't it, for at least the Allied forces? It's enormous, um, and I think that's really what you're going to have to do. I think that, that it's not so much that individuals are killed, mm -hmm. although obviously the U.S. military went after them, but it's uh, a morale factor that you can go identify people and take them out. Very important. You know, in your previous life, you were a vice chair at Goldman Sachs. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about these markets, at least. Right now, we are seeing a sell-off. This is the second day in a row. A lot of confusion about what the Federal Reserve might do October, uh, December 16th. That's the next decision day for rates. Well, it's hard to make predictions about the Fed because you're getting so many different signals. I was at the New York Economic Club yesterday. Bill Dudley of New the York. president of the New York Fed, very able guy, former economist at Goldman, gave a very positive view on the growth prospects for the American economy and even relatively positive well, then raise. about. But he also said at the same time that the inflationary numbers that they'd expected to see pick up really weren't picking up very much. You're, you still have a lot of slack in the labor force. So uh, I think he came out in sort of the middle of the road and as many other Fed governors have done. So my, my guess is that they are going to, but only by a slight margin. And their, their goal is really not so much to focus on markets, it's to focus on the economy. Yeah, well. But the fact is when markets get all nervous as they are today, um, particularly because of American consumers, then that naturally is something the Fed governors are going to take into account. Bob Hormatz, thank you so much.
It's great. We get a twofer here with you, <laughs> former Secretary of State, top man. And then, you know, and then we've got, of course, the, the Goldman Sachs connection. Thank you so much. Thank you.